saw some deer and to be able to look we're gonna maybe get a chance to look at some deer and get a look into that aspen gun so i felt pretty good about finding at least one legal bull today get warm and we warmed up a little bit but everything we see is pretty far off so we got 
four or five hours left of daylight, so we're gonna side hill across this hill, get up to this flat ridge. It'll put us about four-ish hundred yards away from where the elk are, so we're gonna work our way over there and hope that there is a legal bull in with that group. Whoa, these rocks are slick. Hope there's a legal bull in with that group of, I don't know, there's got to be almost a hundred head elk there. There's a, a whole pile, but we'll get up there and yeah, fingers crossed that we can find a legal bull within range to shoot before it gets dark. Eli's a go. Yeah, he's a go. <laughs> he can play through once he gets going. He kind of like puts his head down. Yeah. He said, we're going up there. Yeah. Here's, here's the good thing. So I follow Brian around. And I follow Eli around. It's more comfortable for me because Eli almost has more of a long stride than Brian does. So <laughs> Brian's got that little baby step. I can't hardly even step any steps. No. No. But, but he is breaking the ground, which I appreciate. Uh, Eli's a goer for sure. This all yeah. we got is, is really in the joke. Yeah. It's pretty steep. I've been up. I kind of forgot. Yeah. Until I started looking at it. I'm like, I've glass from that hill before. Yeah. yeah. It's a good one. And with snow, it's going to be real good. Yeah. Mark.
pine trees. Did you see him come out of the trees? No, he hasn't come out of the trees. No, but did you did you film it? Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. He's, I see how he's into the red. Come him into the trees. I saw after I shot, I saw him like run into the trees and stop. Yeah. That's I the wall bottom. I mean, as, as long as you're shivering, you're fine. You stop shivering, and then that, that's when the hyperthermia has kicked in. <laughs> it's nothing like that, though. No hyperthermia, only frostbite. We might lose a finger or a toe, but we're not going to die. <laughs> oh. I think there's a trail right here below us that might go around this face, hopefully. We'll see. Right there. Down here. Just like 10 yards from us. Okay. 
Hey, Brian, you got yourself a dead bull. <sighs> yeah, I was on tracks, and I was like, these look like running tracks, but I didn't find any blood. But there, I could smell him. And I was like, he's got to be close if I smell him. No blood. I was getting a little worried. But... No, I'm on his tracks right here, and there's no blood. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Nice. Oh, yes, we pulled it off. Man, that really, you hate, I mean, I was pretty sure I got him, but, man, you hate to, uh, you hate to, you know, wound something and not be able to find it. But, should we go take a look at it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, dude, he didn't go anywhere. Uh-uh. I mean, he went 30 yards and it was done. Look at that, Brad. He's a fat sucker. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's not easy to come up with a bull in this place. I'm soaked. Got a bowl, fresh meat. We had a freezer fiasco. I didn't really talk about it on the podcast or anything, but we had a freezer fiasco about a month ago, three weeks ago, while I was off hunting. Wife texted me and said the plug to the freezer had come out just like a quarter inch. And probably have been like that for three or four weeks. Lost a lot of meat. It was really sad. So, definitely on a uh, meat run right now. It's been a little slim pickings this season, getting animals on the ground. But we're breaking the streak, man. We're getting, getting it done. So that's the entry, correct? That's the entry hole. That's exactly where I put it. I was like, get away from the shoulder, I don't want to lose any meat. Right in the ribs. He was quartering just a little bit, but I set it back far enough, it should have missed the offside shoulder. But, I shot him with that 338 Weatherby. That RPM. Like he, he literally went I don't know, 30 yards? Yeah. And we were watching that tree line going, is he gonna pop out? Is he gonna cut? Cause it's just one island of trees. And we're like, he's gone. Like he just went, he just got hit, bounce, bounce, nothing. I was like, dude, we got him. We had to have got him. But that bullet, that's what I've seen. Caribou, moose, every critter we've hit with it so far. It's like, whop. And they just go, what? You know, they might even jump like a 10 feet or something and like stand there and whoop. I mean, it's been wicked efficient. Um, I'm super stoked and the barrel's real short. And the, the whole thing with my scope on it is just around six pounds. So, I mean, it's perfect for this backcountry stuff we're doing. I'm stoked, man. I couldn't be happier. Like, heck yeah, it's like, I saw this bull coming up over the ridge earlier today and I'm, I set up on him and as he came over the top, I was dialed and I, and, and I was getting ready to shoot him and then I just didn't have enough time to feel good with the shot and he dipped down into the timber and we were, by then he was a thousand yards away and I was like, man. The only chance we had was to come down this nasty cut. And I was like, well, if we feather our way through that timber, and as long as the, the biggest problem is trying not to make a ton of noise, but if we could get down there, you know, he was in this, on this side of the ridge in the timber. And as we went further and further, we had little pockets of visibility 
or we could just kind of see into the canyon bottom. And then we set up, but we got in about as close as we could get. And then we just set up and waited and hoped that he would, he would uh, go ahead and step out into the open. And he did just before dark. He gave me that moment. So here we go. I wonder how much meat I'll get off of this. 200, more, 250? More, more than I want to pack right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brad's going to need some meat too. I told him we would share. So Brad's going to take half of this bowl. I'll get half, and uh, yeah, we got another elk. We got we got we got a couple more tags. Eli, Mark, and I all have deer tags still. So as soon as we get this bull out, we're switching gears. And uh, Ryan Lampers and his daughter Paley also have tags for Muley, and we're gonna hook up with them and uh, see if we can't get five bucks before the season is over the clock is ticking Whew, he's a little stinky quarter miles from camp where the bull laid and we got about three quarters of a mile to go we've hit the main trail now so not too bad but we're heavy Brian has half in the head and I have half so we are loaded <laughs> but not too much further it's about I don't know 11 ish Something like that, 11.30, but it's cold, but we're almost there. We brought the llamas to camp, but I was not going back up to where we shot that bull again tomorrow, so we decided to put it on our backs and head out, but Brian's not too far behind me, and uh, oh, we're making her. It's pretty cool. You know, we've had not great luck this fall, and glad to see Brian take that bull, and he's not a giant by any means, but he will fill the freezers, and that's all that matters. So, it's pretty cool. He made a great shot, and he always makes me work. It's not heavy or anything. <laughs> oh, dude. We are almost there. Yeah. Uh. But I wasn't hiking back up there tomorrow no. with the llamas. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. No. Uh. This is about your camp plus a full buck. Yeah. Which is usually what we do when we... Yep. Get one up in the top of the mountains. Yeah, I mean, we're we're probably in the 120 ish range. Yep. 120. Yeah. You know, I, I think 130. Close. Yeah, I would say so. But that's just just over what I have to pack out. Yeah. When we're up in the mountains. Yeah. On a deer hunt. Yep. The words that he said still echoing in my head. Don't sell your soul for money, son Means nothing when you're dead We all walk the same round here Our 
blood is pumping red Feel the struggle, feel the pain Keep a level head Find a beautiful love Look straight into their eyes And make sure they know They're your morning light That you'll never let go Till the day that you die This here is love This here is life We are headed out of here. Got the llamas loaded with all the meat. I gotta head home and they are headed to go fill mule deer tags, so I wish them luck there. I'm not sad about it. I'm ready to be home and with the fam. Alright folks, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Brad and I got in really tight on these elk. We have we have a few things to talk about on the strategy, how it went down, and also the pack out yep. of, of the bull. I think it's informative. I think you guys will get something out of that. But before we do that, we have our giveaways. We have a giveaway right now with an alpaca raft and a, and a Harvest Right freeze dryer through Mark. Uh, Mark Livesey on this film with his son Eli. Mark has created some great online uh, e-scouting courses. He'll teach you how to use your map tools yep. in a way that you probably haven't even you know scratched the surface of <laughs> yep. if you if you haven't downloaded his courses before. If you have downloaded his courses, he's added to uh, his website mapping toolkits that help you, you truly leverage uh, like Google Earth and and some some tools for mapping for four states. Yep. And uh, he's going to keep adding more to it, but for 19.99 you can buy the 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 map toolkit and you're entered to win the the pack raft and the freeze dryer. Yep. If you want to go big, you'll get 10 entries for ultimate hunt planning package, which is yep. his e-scouting classes and all four states mm -hmm. map toolkits. But uh, if you just want the map toolkits you can get four of those, and that'll yep. get you uh, four entries, and uh, you can be entered to win the pack raft and the uh, and the freeze dryer. Yep. We're going to announce those winners on the week of January 9th through the 13th. It ends on January 8th. Yep. So that's super cool. And then we have a giveaway going on with Mountain Ops mm -hmm. with a huge prize package. We're going to announce those winners, that winner, on uh, the same, same week. week. And uh, some of you guys wrote in, told us you had trouble with the Mountain Ops uh, discount code using Gritty. It's 20% off right now. The code wasn't working for some reason for, for a few days there. It's back online. Yep. Just go to Mountain Ops, use the code Gritty. You're going to get 20% off. And you're entered to win a Peaks TP, all Peaks gear. Yep. Loophole binoculars, uh, $500 Mountain Ops gift card. You initial ascent backpack. Initial ascent backpack. There's a lot in the that. The $5,000, $6,000 mm -hmm. hunt package. We love doing these things, yep. so it's a win-win. You get 20% off, and you're entered to win that big package on June 9th, yep. and you help us keep doing the show. Also, big giveaway going on with Go Hunt. Mm -hmm. Same situation. Every time you spend at Go Hunt, you, you get entries to win. Uh, you get a discount when you use the code Gritty as well, yep. so it's a win-win there. Three big giveaways going on. If you need gear at Go Hunt, if you're looking for some mountain ops, Yep. You want to support Mark and his e-scouting courses, which I can't recommend enough. You're entered to win all across the board, plus you get a discount when you use the code Gritty at all those places. Mm -hmm. Also, if you leave a comment, and we got yes. a couple of cool ones. Yes. If you leave a comment on this video, we're doing uh, we're we're doing two giveaways. Yep. Okay. We did same thing last week, and we got some funny ones. Yes. We're giving a, a random prize out for just a random comment that we're just going to select randomly. Yep. 
But if you want to like uh, get poetic, get a funny, little more creative, get a little creative, sincere, deep, whatever, just we're going to pick our favorite comment. Yep from the video so if you want to go the extra mile we're going to pick one in a completely biased fashion just our favorite comment yep. so far there's some great contenders <laughs> uh it's been great so we're gonna pick those winners same time yep. on the ninth correct or, or the 10th or the 11th somewhere in there so uh just leave us a comment you're entered to win as usual and then if you share it on instagram we have a prize for mm-hmm. you as well uh, what are the prizes? So for Instagram, we're going to give away some greedy gear, sweatshirts, hats, stuff like that. Our random YouTube winner is going to get a uh, Stealthy Hunter glassing pad. And then the creative one that we choose is going to get a Dark Energy Poseidon Pro. Sweet. Yep. Okay. And if you do need a Dark Energy battery pack, use the code GRITTY over there. Mm-hmm. Get a discount. We love those battery yes. packs. They're excellent. Um, yeah. Very, very good uh, product. We, yeah. you know, and I would say where they really perform is in really, really cold weather. Yeah, you I'd know? say the the weather resistant mm-hmm. nature of the product makes it one of our favorites. I've had one since 2016. Yep. It's still going strong. Uh, I've got two or three actually. Ryan as well. They've lasted a long yes. time. They've been very durable. Get the job done, and and uh, we can't recommend them enough. So check out Dark Energy. They're a great partner. So Brad, on this hunt, yep, I'm just going to throw Brad under the bus here. There is so much filming Brad did not do well, on the stock. I would say there's lots of really good <laughs> Brad filming, was, except for the, the moment it counted. Brad was crushing it all day long. I'm belly crawling up. Uh, I've, I've got a bull. I, I actually, Brad didn't get the camera up in time because as I rolled over the edge, the bull was sort of making his way, and and uh, and he, he tucked in before mm-hmm. Brad could get him on film. That spike that we filmed yep. going into the trees was was probably 30 yards behind the bull, the bull I was after. So we never got the bull on film just before he went into the trees, but we knew where he went. Yeah. And um, and then we pulled back, and can- Brad, for some reason, decided never to turn the camera on again. Well, <laughs> I, I, I will, for myself, I had some water issues going on at home. So the pipes yes. were froze. My wife was not he happy. He had a small home emergency. <laughs> Which uh, it which took my focus off. And took his focus off the filming. I know better, but, but so we, all you see is barely a, us kind of. There at least there is the clip of of us. Um, we're like slowly going to the log you shoot from. Yeah, and yeah. there is a short, short clip of that. But we end up sitting there for over an hour and a half or something. Yeah, and this is what we wanted to get into. You know, we're sitting there on the log, and uh, Brad's, you know, busy <laughs> texting the home uh. home. Uh, the wife and yeah. dealing with the uh, the home emergency. I'm focused on the hunt, and uh, you know we can hear elk down. I mean, we're surrounded by elk. There's mm-hmm. elk in le- less than a hundred yards right. from us, and that hillside it's steep. It's like scree shell rock, and so getting you know ten yards at a time takes forever. It was painstaking. It mm-hmm. took us quite a while of inching, and elk would look up at us. Yep. What you don't see is how close they are. And how much? How many elk? It's real quiet when you got snow, fresh snow, just coming down like that. And it's ten or twelve degrees outside, and there's and not much wind. Mm-mm. They hear everything, so we'd get picked out. Elk would look at us. Some didn't like it and went into the trees, but we got ourselves into position, mm-hmm. and then then the basin. As the sun was coming down, you would not. I mean, elk were just materializing from Everywhere. every crook and Everywhere. cranny. There were hundreds and hundreds of elk popping out, mm-hmm. and yet no legal no bulls. bulls. And you, you said that, and like, it's not on film, but you said that. Like, I cannot yeah. believe the amount of elk without a legal bull. We had elk within 100 yards to 400 yards mm-hmm. all around. It's hundreds. Yep. And I'm like, I can shoot any of these right now. Right. And yet, not one legal bull is out. Mm-mm. And we would hear some bugles, and Brad's like, man, I think that's a cow. You know, and certainly some of those bugles were cows. We'd see them bugle with our eyes and cows do that. Mm -hmm. And people don't, a lot of people don't realize that cows will bugle and they'll sound like a young bull. Now, why do they do that? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's kind of that second estrus cycle or Uh I'm not sure because you hear it a lot more during September in the rut. But I don't hear it as much in these light hunts. But I still think it has to do something their extra cycle. It's pretty interesting, mm-hmm. nonetheless. And but there was a there was one or two where I'm like, first one way up in the canyon. I'm like, that sounds like kind of a big bull. Yep, that sounds like a nice bull. And then then there was another bull right where the bull stepped out. Mm-hmm. So certainly that that was most likely him. Yep, bugling. And 
they'd bugle here and there. See, we knew though because we had seen. We probably saw four legal bulls, yep. and a legal bull is a bull that's branch antlered, basically mm-hmm. that has a brow tine at least of, like four inches, of four inches, is, right? Yeah. Anything of that legal. So a spike isn't legal. No cows were legal except for youth. Like Eli could shoot a cow. Yep. We couldn't shoot a cow. Yep. We only had two days to do this hunt. Mm-hmm. The first day, Eli got that 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 the cow. Calf. Now, we were after the bull in that group, but we just couldn't find him. It would have been great for Eli to lay down a bull and a cow right. at the same time. Yep. We were ready for that. But on this evening when we snuck into place, um, it was getting desperate. We had kind of charged up the mountain, you yep. and I, and you were filming it. And you and I kind of snuck out and got into position. And then... Eli and Mark started to make their way there. But by the time we got in place, there were so many elk alerted to our presence that they were kind of getting sketched. And as Mark and Eli tried to make their way across, it was just too noisy. And so Mark and Eli uh, backed out and they started making their way down the hill. And what's interesting is Mark got on a bull that they could have shot, but they thought it was the the bull we were about to shoot. And so he decided he didn't want to shoot it because he didn't want to, because there was no camera going for Mm -hmm. him. And so he's like, man, this is part of this is capturing the moment on film. And uh, unfortunately it was a different bull and and he and Eli could have shot that bull easily. And Eli could have got a bull. Uh, But that was generous. That was gracious of Mark. Um, yeah, you know, knowing we're all there as a team and trying to capture these moments on film and bring them to you. Yep. And so, but, but we sat there and I knew, I mean, I know I've been doing this long enough in these areas where, where you get some hunting pressure, mm-hmm. uh, these elk are coming down because the snow is pushing them from the high country right. into the low country. It's a late season hunt. They're down there cause the feed is good yeah. because the weather's better. And, uh, a lot of those big bulls, they're not. They, where, where, like, where do you think those bulls were? Well, I would like say big be, six, because it, because it is like a migration hunt. Those big bulls, they're not down there yet. They are still up in the the heavy or the, the deep snow in the heavy timber. They have a small pocket and they're in recovery mode. They're just hanging out. I think it's, I think that's most likely. But we were not far no. from where we know for a fact. A couple of our buddies saw right. some big three. Mm-hmm. Like 330, 340 inch bulls. And I would say a lot of those bulls, if they find a little open spot in the timber that they can feed, it gives them protection. They have food. They don't need water because they can munch on the snow. They're not coming out. We weren't far from where we know a giant was like five days earlier. Yep. So they were, it's possible. The point I'm, the point is whether that they were a little higher elevation or not, they were not, they're, they're tucked away. They're not coming out of the timber. They're mm-hmm. not going to expose themselves. The older, more mature, intelligent, smart bulls, yep. they are, they are going to stay. They're pretty much nocturnal. They're just laying low. They're just not going to come out during the daylight. And if you do see even the younger bulls, you're seeing them at first light in the first right. 20, 30 minutes of daylight. And you're not seeing them again until dark. Like 15 minutes for dark. The mm-hmm. bull that we did see, I mean, you can see he is tucked away and I can see his horns. Yep. You didn't even see the body. Right. You know, I just picked out his horns as I was like scanning, <laughs> trying to find a bull and just looking through every cranny. I spotted the bull just behind those, behind those, and his horns are blended into the timber. Right. I was quite proud of myself. <laughs> And uh, we wanted to kill that bull, but yep. he was surrounded by hundreds of cows. Yeah. So there's a bit of a challenge. The hunt is fun um, because of kind of the, the nature of well, it. Well, it's just cool. I mean, you're, you seeing, get, you're so, seeing many so many elk. You know, yeah. that's that's what makes it more yeah. fun. For sure. But we, we get in there and we, we, I mean, the hope is the bull comes out of the timber mm-hmm. and exposes himself while there's still some shooting light remaining. Yep. And that's that's kind of the nature nature of it when you're that late into the season right there's hunting pressure and most people i think would go home yeah before that moment happens and this is a dense grizzly bear area like yep. mark has been in this area in the past killed a bull and he was solo and uh and he was trying to pack it out and there was a grizzly bear just yeah. pounding in the whole and like time like i said he goes luckily the bear never actually like came in close enough to really cause a threat, but he said that bear watched him the whole time skin that elk, yep. you know, clean it out. And he's like, I've never skinned out a, a bull elk so fast in my entire <laughs> life just to get it away from the kill site. And I think that that's why a lot of people, especially in those areas, mm-hmm. they're going to, they're, they're going to get out of there. There's all these warning signs about grizzly yep. when you hunt in some of these areas and people are like, okay, I'm going to get out. And, and 
you know, I don't blame someone for being cautious and wanting to do hunt that way, yeah. but it's going to severely limit your ability to, to get a bull in that kind of situation. Well, now, and I would say too, the cold, like staying the night yeah. is tough, you know, it, during the day it can be tough too. I and mean, we had close to zero temperatures, you know, oh, for sure. throughout that hunt. Oh, absolutely. We went, we went to zero mm-hmm. when we got down there though. When, so we, I mean, I was set, I was prepped, I was ready. Yep. I was thinking that bull, if he steps out, he's 200 yards to 250. He stepped out, he was 250. I'd already had it all arranged. Mm-hmm. I put the crosshairs on him. I just, in fact, he's behind the tree just enough. I'm not, I'm going to wait till he comes out. Dude, it took forever, it forever. seemed. Yep. It and, was it was, like, and it was cold enough there, like, even though we had all those elk there, as we were getting set up, like, we we were like, nah, we're putting puffy pants on. You yeah. don't see it on film, but like, we were making sure that we knew we were going to be there a long time. And we knew we had to get keep warm, stay warm. You know, well, you still had your body heat in mm-hmm. you. Get all those layers on because sitting still is going to let that temp oh, drop geez. in your body. Yeah, we were good. We were we were. Co- I I was a popsicle. I was freezing when he finally stepped out. Yep. But he stepped out and uh, gave us that that shot. I shot him with that Weatherby three thirty eight yep. RPM. Yep, it's a two hundred twenty five grain Barnes TTS X bullet. Yep. And uh, we used that in Alaska for the caribou moose, and the, the caribou, moose yep. as well. Shot my elk with that. I love that rifle. It's short, lightweight, doesn't weigh much. I've talked about it before. We did a mm-hmm. podcast about it. Um, it hit that bull, both double lungs. Uh, he ran probably 30, 40 yards. Yep. And then he stands there for a while. I can kind of see his yeah, horns. Yeah, and, and I can, like, the through video. the camera, I'm kind of seeing it. And I'm like, I don't see him come out. I mean, he goes into that second patch of tipper, timber. He never came out. And mm-hmm. then it got too dark for us. We sat there and watched for a half hour. Yeah. Until it was so dark we couldn't see. And he never came out. On the video, it was too dark for us to really. We knew he went in there, but we didn't know after that. Yeah. I assumed he was dead. I yep. mean, I was 99% sure yep. he was he was dead, but you never know until you you know, like put physically eyes on see him. them or right there, yeah. Um and uh a couple weeks earlier, I had had a freezer fiasco where my plug had come out a little bit of the freezer, I guess, for a few weeks in the garage and uh I lost the whole freezer. Mm-hmm. So, we I was, you know, I have the moose cuz thankfully I had half of the moose because yep. Ryan and I split that and I had a bunch of caribou meat. Yep. So that was cool. But I'm like, man, I need way more meat than this to get through the year. <laughs> yeah. I have bear, a little bit of bear left over from the hunt with Pedro and Brady and La- Livis and Lamper. So, but you needed some meat too. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's been a lean it's season. It's been a lean season for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we were really keen to like put a, put a, a bull elk down and get that meat well, home. And is that, you know, that bull's a, a, I would say a younger bull. He's obviously not a big mature bull, mm-hmm. but that bull was putting on fat already, and yeah. he had a pretty dang he big was body. A big body, yeah, he yes. was great. I was really s- happy with how stout his yeah. body was. So we, uh, you know, we make our way down there, break, you know, get him broken down. We get it broken down pretty quick. We have the radio going pretty loud, or the music, some music going, yep. just to like give the grizzlies a little pause. Uh, got light, we're scanning, but we got the thing broke down pretty quick yeah. on our packs, and we had a decision to make. Do we pack the whole thing out, or do we leave it behind? Yeah. and Because uh, the llamas are like a mile and a half, between a mile and a half and two miles from mm-hmm. where we're at. It is all downhill, it's although all downhill. the train sucks and there's lots of snow. But, and somebody forgot the trekking poles back at the teepee. Yeah. We talked about that <laughs> on a podcast. But, you know, uh, we were able to get the meat. Uh, deboned and yep. in the bags. I think we were carrying about 130 pounds each. Right at 130. We didn't have much gear, just a little bit of water and then food. Maybe, for the maybe day. a little more. Um, but it was, we found like 120, 130 to 140 is kind of, we can do it. Yep. We don't want to. Yeah. We want to avoid and that. We made that possible. decision. We kind of looked at each other like, ah, oh, we can hang it, get the, get the llamas. But it's I like, mean, it's a mile and a half. Like, we're already here. We don't have to come back. That gives us more days to either chase more elk or go mm-hmm. chase mule deer. On a 10-day mm-hmm. expedition hunt, um, people always ask this. They, they, they don't understand numbers and how we do it. Mm-hmm. Typically, we go in with our packs with 10 days of food. It is about two to two and a half pounds a day for food. Yep. Usually two and a half, really, for me. Yep. Um, when we come out and I kill a mule deer and I pack my camp, Mm-hmm. My weapon, everything, plus all my all the meat in the skull. Yep, I'm 115 to 120 pounds. Right, um, for the pack out. Yep, with my camp, when, assuming all the food's been eaten, mm-hmm. and um, and I've done that with Ryan year over year. You know, 
it, literally, it's 115, 120. Yeah. About. That's what you can kind of bank on if you debone it right and, and uh, you got the skull in the head mm-hmm. and then your whole camp. And you got your pack weight about the same as ours. Yep. Um, and we've I've been able to pack 120 for a good 8, 10 miles in a day. Yep. And I do all right, uh, even in some technical terrain. So we knew we were just going to be over that a little bit, yeah. but it was just a mile and a half. So We, we knew just, it was downhill. We knew you had, once we hit the trail, it was like three quarters of a mile to where the camp was. So it was like there it begins, I wouldn't say easy walking because you got the snow and the slick, yeah. slick ground, but it's like, man, we can get back in a couple hours. So two critical pieces of equipment that are are very, very useful. One is, okay, three. One is a, a great backpack. And yep. I, I, I got to say, uh, I love that initial ascent with the, with the, the frame that the triaxle frame, yep. like it's that carbon fiber frame. It's just, it holds weight. Well, mm-hmm. Brad was using the Everly stock. It holds weight. Well, so yep. we've used some other packs and we've talked about them on other shows. I just think at heavy loads, um, a, a serious framed backpack works better. Yeah. And uh initial ascent is doing a great job there. The the Catula micro spikes. Yep. Micro spikes in that terrain is the difference between falling on your butt and, yes. and like really sticking to the ground. And I will say this because I left my micro spikes at home. So we picked up the I can't remember yak tracks, I think so they did. are. And you I, lost one. I lost one in the shell rock. But then I also, with the other one, I noticed before I even lost it, they are not even close to what the micro spikes are. Performing. The Catula is not even close. Yeah. I, I would say I, I have used like Merrill and some other, Crispy had a, some mm-hmm. spikes and I've used a whole bunch of different spikes. So far, the Catula are head and shoulders in yeah. a class above yep. uh, the other micro spikes. Durability and stability and staying on your feet. I mean, I'm, there might be something out there I haven't tried yet, but I've used quite a few different versions. Yeah. And the Catula is the one to get. Now, yeah. I have the same pair of Catula now since, like, New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I've used them a what, ton. 18, something like that. I beat the crap out of them. I don't lose them. Um, one of the things that you can do, because people do lose them. Yeah. You know, if you don't have a big boot, like I'm wearing a heavier duty boot up there because of how cold it was. Mm-hmm. If I was wearing a smaller boot and the, the spikes weren't quite big enough, yep. um, one of the things, if you're in risk of losing them because you don't want to lose one, Brad lost one. Yep. Make sure you put them on and then put your gator over the top. So the buckle that goes around the bottom goes around it, it keeps your uh, micro spike from be- getting yeah. lost. Yep. So Brad didn't do that, and so Brad lost one. Nope, I lost one, and uh, that sucked because one leg is slipping out and didn't have like, didn't have the trekking poles. And I will say that is another. That's the third one crucial piece of gear because, you know, I haven't paid attention to it in the last four years. I have been like religiously using trekking poles, packing heavy, heavy loads all the time. We throw you know twenty yep. pounds of camera gear and. Not having the trekking poles, I noticed with that weight was like, wow, this just your core has to be so much stronger. And I was sore on my upper quads where I mm-hmm. normally never get sore when I'm yeah. trekking poles. But I think between the snow, the grass, and the side hill, and the really slick conditions and not having trekking poles puts a huge toll on yeah, you. Yeah, the, the, having one micro spike on one foot mm-hmm. and no trekking poles, Brad... <laughs> Brad was in a league all of his own, and I would have shared with him, folks, but I told him that morning not to I leave did. his trekking and I, and pole. And I was, I was like, you know what? I haven't pulled them off my backpack in two days because I've been filming, so I was like, I'm leaving them, yeah. and then we kill a bull. And I said, Brad, it's not for during the day. It's for if we kill. But guess what? I manned up, and I was <laughs> I, dude, I was cruising out of there. Like It's funny because Brad didn't mention the fact, because I told him that morning, I gave him a little like small lecture. Just <laughs> grab your poles, put them on your pack. If if you don't use them, you don't use them. And he's like, uh huh, uh huh. And then we get there, and he doesn't have the poles. We it was an unspoken. Yep. No <laughs> word said. I no word and I, said. And I wasn't gonna say, hey Ryan, can I borrow one of your trekking <laughs> poles? That wasn't happening. Nope. It's like no. Nope. My ego's too big. Yeah. It's too big for that. <laughs> so I was like, well, I thought about you know carve a stick or whatever but brad's young he's yep he's way younger than me and uh he's tough as hell so i mean we've been doing it for how many days in a row like 30 40 days so yeah. I, was, I mean i was in great shape yeah and, and, like, and uh we got the meat down the mountain yeah all carefully and um and uh it was a great hunt every time you leave a comment it helps uh get our show out there because yeah youtube rewards that engagement and so plus we enjoy the engagement yeah we, we 
work hard to respond to all the comments and read all the comments. So uh, we figure if you take the time to leave a comment, we're going to take the time to read it. So thank you for that. Leave us a comment. If you got a question about the hunt or how it went down, let us know. Check out uh, the podcast that we're dropping lately. We did some with um, Bo, Bo Beatty. Beatty. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's he got uh, llamas. Yep, Wilderness Ridge Trail llamas. Yep. And uh, the shows were really interesting. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed I that. I mean, time. Bo's as genuine as they, as they come. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love it. So check that out. Uh, anything else, Brad? Is that it? No, just the giveaways and, and yeah. we mentioned. 20% and... off at Mountain Ops right now. Use the code GRITTY. Go hunt giveaway. I use the code GRITTY over there. I think you saved 10%. Yep. And uh, Mark Livesey, check out Treeline Academy. Get his online courses and you'll be entered to win a pack raft and a harvest right freeze dryer. Yep. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all your support. And stay gritty.